slowly orbiting at the edge of deep space 1,000 kilometers beyond 21st century Earth is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Starlab. Here, Starlab Research Director Maura Cassidy and scientists and technicians of the International Space Authority watch over the countless star systems that fill the universe. This week, Maura Cassidy and space exploration team captains John Graydon and Buddy Griff encounter the phantoms of Tamerlane and experience a dream within a dream on Alien Worlds. Starlab Control, this is the Galileo. Do you read me? This is Starlab. I read you, Galileo. What's your situation, Captain Egan? Where are you? We're 200 kilometers out at Vector 205. And this isn't Captain Egan. It's Lieutenant Becker. Egan's dead. Lieutenant Becker, this is Dr. Cassidy. What happened to Captain Egan? He died in the mails from Dr. Cassidy. A whirlpool in the universe. Captain Egan fell into it and drowned in the stars. He's either tripped out on something or he's in shock. Uh, Lieutenant Becker, what's the condition of your crew? Sleeping. They fell asleep on Tamerlane. They're still dreaming. Call the short-range vehicle hangar, Jerry, and order a couple of tugs out to tow him in. Right. And all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy dark eye glances, and where thy footstep gleams in what ethereal trances. Attention all SRV personnel. This is a priority rescue alert. Prepare three Magnum class tugs for immediate launch. Utility pilots Haskell, Shaw, and Henning, please report to the SRV operations officer. Leader, Vector 9. Roger, fire frame. Mission control, Galaxy 9. Uh, Roger, Starlab. We have the Galileo on site and she is damaged. Uh, looks like the starboard thruster housing's ripped open and she's leaking fuel. Tug 17. Uh, 17, go ahead, Lee. Uh, yeah, Jamie, see if you can check out that fuel leak, will you? Uh, Roger. Uh, tug 9. Tug 9. Come on, Ron, I know you're there. I can hear you swearing at your receiver in my headphones. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lee. I had to switch to another channel. Your transmission was uh, breaking up. Okay, get around to the Galileo's port side and uh, see if you can get a grappler pad on her. Use the standard placement. Roger. I have grappler contact, Lee. Bad magnetism stable. Okay, Lee, I've closed off the leak. All right. Now let's get a grappler pad on her starboard side. I'll stick one on the nose. Roger. Okay, you guys, let's haul her in. Forty-five minutes after launch, Space Tugs 2, 9, and 17 return to Starlab with a damaged laboratory ship in tow and guided into docking bay 14. Stand by for incoming casualties. Thirty minutes after the Galileo's arrival, Starlab's executive physician, Dr. Diana Rossiter, begins a computer-assisted examination of the ship's unconscious crew. Three hours later, Starlab's Mycroft computer completes its analysis of the examination. Look at the waveform patterns here on screen three. Mm. These are the electroencephalograms of the Galileo's crew. 
You notice anything unusual? Looks like the same EEG repeated ten times. That's right. And not only are their EEGs identical, they all have the same pulse rate, temperature, respiration, and dream state eye rhythms. Really? I don't know what happened to them, Mara. But they're all dreaming the same dream. Alien Worlds will continue. Alien Worlds continues. Six weeks after its disappearance during a routine mission, the deep space laboratory ship Galileo returns to Star Lab, its captain missing and presumed dead, its first officer in a state of second degree mind shock, its crew asleep and dreaming identical dreams. What about Lieutenant Becker? He talked off and on during his examination, but he was getting so anxious I, I thought it best to sedate him for a while. Diana, did you record what he said during the examination? Maddie's making a copy of the tape now. You want to hear it? Mm-hmm. Have her send it up to my quarters. I'll listen to it when John and Buddy get here. Solaris to Star Lab Control. This is Star Lab. Go ahead, Solaris. We've picked up some time, Jerry. Our revised ETA is 4 minutes, 13 seconds. 4 plus 13, roger. Okay, John, your revised docking orbit insertion coordinates are 196 degrees at subvector 20 alpha, docking bay 9. See you in a few minutes, Jerry. Solaris out. Starlab clear on ITS channel 096. You have that look on your face, buddy. What are you thinking? Remember what Mora said about Lieutenant Becker? You know, that verse he quoted when she asked what happened to Frank? Yeah, what about it? Well, it's part of a poem by Thackeray or Tennyson, one of those guys. It's from that period, anyway. I know I've either heard it or read it. Wait a minute. Ingrid. Ingrid read it to me. Solaris to Star Lab Control. Uh, this is Star Lab. Stand by. Go ahead, Solaris. Uh, Jerry, patch me through to the library. I have to talk to Ingrid. Roger. Stand by. And all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy dark eye glances, and where thy footstep gleams, in what ethereal dances, by what eternal streams. Oh, that's it. What's it from, Ingrid? It's the last verse of a poem called To One in Paradise by Edgar Allan Poe. And that isn't Lieutenant Becker's only reference to Poe. Uh, buddy, play back the last part of Dr. Rossiter's tape again. Okay. They're almost finished, Lieutenant. Now look into the light. No, it was dark. It was always dark. Mm-hmm. Then Captain Egan wanted to explore, so we went out in a crawler. I see. Now, the other eye, Lieutenant. The whirlpool started. I got scared and I jumped out of the crawler and it was swallowed up in a maelstrom. I didn't mean to leave him there. I know you didn't, Lieutenant. My hands. <laughs> when, I, when I look at my hands, I see sand. Grains of golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep. <laughs> While I weep. <laughs> While I weep. No, no. Lie down, Lieutenant. Come, that, that's right. Now, I'm going to give you something to make you feel better. Well, anyway, the whirlpool he mentioned coincides with one of Poe's short stories, A Descent into the Maelstrom. And the reference to grains of golden sand? A poem Poe wrote in 1847, after his wife died. A dream within a dream. Mora. What is it, Jerry? Uh, you better get up here. I have a transmission coming through on the Mayday frequency. It's Captain Egan. Egan? What? How can that be? We're on our way, Jerry. I'm on Tamerlane. Somewhere in the Earth's 
minor system. The exact coordinates are on the Galileo's flight recorder. What about the whirlpool, Captain? An illusion, a dream, <laughs> like everything else around here. Uh, what's your situation now, Frank? Well, the batteries here in the crawler are about gone, so this will have to be my last transmission. And I have rations for two, maybe three days. Get me out of here, buddy. I don't, I don't think I can... Captain Egan? Captain Egan? Ah, that's it. We've lost him. Ingrid, is Tamerlane connected to Poe? It's one of his most famous poems. What's it about? Love, life, death, rebirth, the entire spectrum of physical and mystical experience. Call Docking Bay 14, Jerry. Tell Simon to disconnect the Galileo's flight recorder and take it to the Solaris. Okay. Ingrid, go back to the library and pull everything you have on Edgar Allan Poe. Hard copy, sleep tapes, microcards, everything. Then meet us at the Solaris. Am I going with you? You certainly are. But why? Because what happened to the Galileo might happen to us. And since this whole incident is somehow connected to Poe, what you know about his work might be our only protection. Okay, let's get busy. At 13.30 hours, 40 minutes after receiving Captain Egan's transmission, Mora and Ingrid enter Docking Bay 9 and join John and Buddy aboard the Solaris. Is everything programmed and ready? Oh, we're all set, Mora. Good. Better strap yourselves in. We're due to launch in 90 seconds. Ready? Let's yes. go. Okay, buddy, let's run it down. Exterior hatches and fuel bay doors. Pressurized and locked. Environmental control systems. Green across the board. ECS backup terminals. In phase and programmed for zero time emergency interlock. Microwave antenna function, positive. Digital auto guidance and inertial gyro integration. Auto guidance in phase. Gyro integration at zero minus three seconds. Tank pressure. Maximum, one through six. Cancel the ignition safety terminal. Positive function on IST lockout. Alien worlds will continue. Continues. 48 hours after launching from Star Lab, the Solaris penetrates the Ursa Minor star system, a constellation filled with glowing stellar dust and brilliant star clusters, a constellation dominated by the second magnitude binary star, Polaris. Three hours later, guided by the navigation coordinates from the Galileo's flight recorder, the sleek white SET interceptor lands on the dark, mist-shrouded planetoid of Tamerlane. Open the visual scanner ports, buddy. Let's have a look at this place. Okay. There's nothing but mist and shadows. Can you move a little to the right, buddy? I can't see the screen from back here. Oh, yeah, sorry. How's that? That's fine. It looks like the landscape in the fall of the House of Usher. Wait a minute. What's that in the corner of the screen? It's a cat. Yeah. A black cat. It's... Wait a minute. What happened? Where'd it go? It... It's gone. Was it really there? It's gone. Maybe it wasn't really there. It had to be there. Oh, buddy, I'm so sleepy. We all saw it, didn't we? Where's Frank? Oh, we have to find Frank. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. We can't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Hmm. 